All right, Robbie, oh, my friend, a little okay, weekend off for you. Mm. Um, I'm sure you enjoyed all the yeah, festivities and all the action and the goals and lovely. the controversy. Thank you very much. And we're all waiting to know yeah. what you feel about some of these big incidents. <laughs> of course, <laughs> the topic suggested there, Rob, we're gonna, we are going to start at the top of that list and the top of the yeah. weekend stories, really. Newcastle United, 1-0 victory yeah. over Arsenal. Anthony Gordon scores, um, I guess, midway through the second half mm. in a highly controversial goal. Yeah. I think we should just cut to the chase, Rob, on it. Um, I'll give a little bit of um, background here on it. Of course, you know, there was three parts to the winning goal that was under review from the video assistant yeah. referee. Did the ball go over the line yeah. before Callum Wilson gathered it? He then crossed it to the back post um, yeah. where there was a challenge at the back post. It was Joe Ellington on Gabriel. Um, the ball then falls yeah. to the ground where Anthony Gordon sticks it in. Was there a foul at the back post? Was Gordon offside? Yeah. Two of those three, Rob, and I don't yeah. think we need to kind of get into... We, we've got... We had it from the PGO Moel that the over-the-line, yeah. non-conclusive angle, disappointingly, yeah. we did, they, they haven't got the angles to, to confirm that no. there's definitely over the line, so the on-field kind of decisions went. And the same Decision with the third goes, part there, yeah. Rob, where... Again, because of the location of the players and the ball, was it was yeah. difficult to yeah. draw any lines to see if, if Gordon yeah. was behind the ball, of course, keeping him on side. So, OK, this is not ideal, by the way, and, and, it, and it frustrates everybody <laughs> that the technology still is not foolproof on that. I guess we've got to live with that. Yeah. But the piece in between, Rob, the push is where... Uh -huh. There's yeah. varying yeah. Uh, degrees of disagreement from former pros. And yeah. I always, of course, I always value mm -hmm. what the pundits, what the former pros feel of a particular challenge. Um, in the studio, yeah. I felt like, and I'll say it again, that Joe Ellington was guilty of pushing Gabriel. As Gabriel bent down yeah. to head the ball away, he felt the force of the body of yeah. Joe Ellington and the two arms on his back to really lean him, to, to push him over in some way. Um, for, for me, it was a foul. And for me, again, just to clarify, I think it was a clear and obvious error by the officials not to give that as a foul. Um, but the, of course, it wasn't given. Yeah. And VAR said there's no um, clear and obvious error of that. And again, before I get your take on it, Rob, of what I've seen and mm. heard and, and, and listened and read, about half and yeah. half. You know, a lot of the UK pundits thought it was fine. Mm. A lot of the US-based ones I've listened to thought it was a foul. I thought it was a foul. Tim didn't think it was a foul. I want yeah. you to do it in two stages, Rob. If, if it was a clear yeah. and obvious error, I want your answer on that. And then if we, if we were re-refereeing yeah. it, what would you have given it, you know, yeah. if you're the referee in that moment? Okay, so is it a clear and obvious error? I believe it is. Uh, why I say mm. that, Robin, I, I try and always try and put myself in those situations. I'm, I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm Joe Ellington in that situation. And that ball's coming across and I want to head it in. And I kind of see that if I don't get... Yeah. If I don't nudge Gabriel, Gabriel's going to head that ball away from me, right? It's a great shot. So I'm going to try and nudge him in a way that's just going to ease him off, off the ball. I'm going to get the header and we're going to score. It's a great shot. Now... Because of that push, because what happens with it, and this is where I think Joe Ellington doesn't really head the ball in the end, Rob, because he, 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 he realises yeah. that the ball's, he can't get to it because Gabriel's there. The ball's dropping in front of him. And if anything, there is a question, and also, I, I don't even want to throw any more uh, around this VAR, <laughs> but there's the argument that it maybe hit his arm. It hit his arm, Rob, before he fell to, to mm. Gordon, before he smashes it in. But mm. let's leave that to a side yeah. for another yeah. day, another yeah. VAR discussion. Yeah. Let's just go. So, I, for me, I'm thinking, I know I've been Joe Ellington in that situation. I realise ah, I'm not going to get this unless I, I'm going to nudge him and I'm going to get my hands away. I'm going to make, make it not look too obvious. And it's a foul. It's a foul on the defender. To, to allow you to... And sometimes, Rob, I've got away with them. I've probably yeah. had three or four times in my career where I thought, God, you didn't know if get away with that one. Yeah. I give him a bit of a nudge yeah. and the referees yeah. let it go. Yeah. But yeah. I think with VAR and with that situation to look at it again, I think that's the one. Now, it's interesting because obviously Arsenal have come out with a big statement today, backing Mikel Arteta and, you know, his words used like disgraceful and it's embarrassment yeah. and how sick he was. Mm. And I understand a lot of his emotions. In some respects, I think Mikel Arteta maybe didn't do he did himself and his club a little bit of disservice. And I'm not 
be no critical. But if he just said, you know what, the, the one that, the, 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 whether the ball's in or out, that's inconclusive. Whether he's offside, that's inconclusive. But focused attention on the foul, I think that's where people would have, because some people are still saying, oh, the ball's in. Yeah, because they, uh, the ball's out, sorry. Because, yeah. you know, we see a picture where there looks like a bit of line. And because yeah. of the shape of the ball and spheres, yeah. so we know that yeah. that's not that's inconclusive. Mm. The same with the pictures of whether he's onside or not. And some are suggesting he's behind the ball, so he doesn't really matter. And inconclusive. But mm. the, one, the, 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 the one key area where Arsenal have a huge argument for a foul on the defender before the goal scored is the Gabriel incident. And, and that's my feeling. That was my feeling when, it, when I first saw it. It's my feeling as I see more replays. It's my feeling as I stick myself in that situation, Rob, and no, yeah. I've kind of been that guy. Um, so, yeah, for me, I think Arsenal were a little harshly done by that the goal was allowed to stand. Uh, and they end up losing the game 1 0. Rob, it's such a, that's such a different and interesting take on that, putting yourself in Joe Ellington's shoes. Because I did hear a take from, mm. from a friend of ours, Gary Neville, over in the UK, Sky, excellent pundit Gary Neville, um, yeah. who, who put yeah. himself in the defender's shoes, Rob. And he was saying, you Correct, know, I've been there many defender. times yeah. where I'm bending down, mm. I'm leaning forward, I want to flick the ball out. It, it doesn't work out, and I throw myself forward and I kick my legs out to get the foul. So he's 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 describing yeah. it when he's been a defender and thinks and thinks that yeah. oh, I've, me I've messed up here and I'm going to make yeah. it look like a foul. Yeah. So it's so interesting. I, I am a still I, prefer I your angle. Yeah, yeah, you can throw on the other angle, and, mm. I, and I and I relate more to that, mm. and it makes more sense of when I see a. A, a, a player, Rob, that's bo his body is in the line of Gabriel. His arms are on his back, and I'll, I'll relate it in Correct. a different way, Rob. Um, you know, in terms of what deserves to be a penalty, so many little tiny touches yeah. of feet in the box. I'm like, really? Is that a penalty? Yeah, it seems yeah, soft. Yeah. So if you put the same yeah. kind of, well, sometimes it's only a little touch. Two arms on the back that uh, that yeah. add some kind of force. Yeah would have to compare with a tiny little touch of feet in the box Absolutely. that we see given all the time. So I'm with you, and I had no Ask idea. Gary the, Ask Gary O'Neill at Wolves, mate. Yeah. Ask Gary O'Neill at Wolves. Yeah, well, he's that had one, two exactly. penalties last two weeks, and he's, he's, yep. he's hardly had no contact. Yeah. yeah. Had hardly any contact. So that's interesting, mate. And, and, and I want to... just yeah, it's was, a good point. It's a really was, good point. Yeah, just we're on, we're on the same thing, Rob. And this is where I felt st yeah. even stronger about this, right? And, I, and I'll try not to make it seem like a rant, but the behaviour of Bruno Gamarish, OK? And... Yeah. The f yeah. Um, and, and, OK, so for me, first off, the run behind a player and the, and the, and the striking of the head with his forearm yeah. which is not a you Maybe. know it's a hard oh, part of yeah. his arm and you can see the head jolt forward there's significant force and that should have been a red mm. card right that's one thing for VR that they didn't think it was yeah. um, and then there was various others yeah. where he remember when Jorginho played the ball and he shoved him deliberately to the he ground pushed him. he pushed yeah, him which he did down. get a yellow card yeah. so two things Rob yeah the, the, obviously I want your opinion on whether you think it's a straight red from VAR on, on, the, on that yeah. elbow to the head yeah. also didn't we used to see yeah. a few years ago, Rob, where the fourth official, where the referee's assistant with a flag would sort of flag it, say, well, 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 hang on a minute, referee, he's just cuffed him in the head. Yeah. Like, have you seen that? I've seen yeah. it. Let's have yeah. a chat. And the, and the referee would go mm. over to him and he'd give him a yellow or a red card based on one of his assistants yeah. and what they'd seen. That absolutely is part of the laws and, and the officials can get opinion mm. off everybody around there. They've yeah. stopped doing that. As if, like, well, VAR says everything now. I don't need to tell them <coughs> about that. And I think that's when yellow card offences are missed. And, and the way that Bruno stayed in the game there, based on that and the, the big challenge with the elbow, I just a think, of other, God, yeah, he where smashes are the ball we? At, at, at he habits. smashes him at Havertz. It was almost as though the, 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 the referee had set a standard where he was not he was going to not really go and, 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 and be disciplined with the players, Rob. So as a player, you get the sense of that. So yep. Bruno kind of knew he was right. And, and, and I go back to... I'd go back to the point where the Kai Havertz challenge is a lucky yellow. I think that could have been upgraded as red. Now, yeah. because if, if yeah. he doesn't upgrade that to a red, I think Bruno stays on the pitch because of the things he does. If he'd have, if, Bru if Kai Havertz had got a red card, which I don't think he'd have an awful lot of argument, Rob, if, if he was a red, I think Bruno might well have got sent off yesterday then. Because I think the referee would have thought, hold on, I've got Mikel Arteta... Um, 
I've got um, Mikelot Tessa shouting down at me every time on the touch line. I've, I've put them down to 10 men. But it, it, that, that shouldn't excuse that Bruno Fernandes could have probably had four or five yellow cards yesterday do you think, and was do you out think of the control al elbow before half-time. Was it a, a red for you, Rob, the elbow to the, the back The elbow was big enough to be a straight red, Rob. Yeah. The, 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 the elbow to the head was big enough to be a straight record. There was no reason, Rob, for his elbow <laughs> to be there to no, catch the player not. in that manner. There's yeah. absolutely no reason. Yeah. And he, so you have no argument. I know Eddie Howe's got a bit of, you know, he doesn't see some and he does see some. And Mikel mm. is not much better. Um, you know, it was a case where I thought both players, I thought Havis and Bruno Guimaraes, could both have, have got red cards in the game. Let's let me just let me just go back to that. Can I because, add, Rob? Though, can, no, can, okay, you add sorry, before yeah, I come on. back. No, finish before this one off. No, no, you finish okay. off because mine's a bit more of a general different. point. Okay, yeah. no, I think the Kai Havis thing's important, uh, Rob, because you know, covering yeah. the game, you know, we saw it, we had tons of looks at it. It was a, mm. by the way, a super wild challenge. There was a moment where his studs were yeah. really, really high and then he kind of lands on the ground yeah. and his feet then are lower, not a ton of contact. So I, that's where I was like, it's an awful challenge, but just mm. yellow cards out, okay yeah. for me. And maybe we didn't, you know, I think okay. on social media, you know, we do ch check that stuff and try and gauge, you know, the feeling out there generally. And maybe, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people are saying, well, what about the habits the challenge? And maybe we didn't talk about it enough. So it's good that you brought it up and I wanted to ask you about it anyway. Yeah. And, and I thought it was close, yeah. but again, I can't, and I know the frustration from the Arsenal fans, I just, uh, from the Newcastle fans in, in terms of keep going on at Bruno, I just didn't think there was enough. I yeah. mean, they take about, the, 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 the one of the factors is the, the contact point. When they, where the contact is with the studs, is it up the shin? Is it down by the foot, down by the ground, yeah, which yeah, is less it. dangerous yeah. apparently? Um, and I just thought it was one of those. But I'm, I'm pleased that we chatted about it because I think the, you know, the, yeah, the Newcastle yeah. fans are like, well, and all about to Bruno, they should have had a red mm. card as well. So, um, again, I'm not changing yeah. my opinion on what I think it, it was the right call on that. But, yeah, mm. m maybe it, it was closer. And you're sounding like you thought it was closer to a red guard card than yeah. maybe I did. I thought it was closer to a red card. I thought, yeah. thought it was a little bit lucky. Yeah. Um, and I just didn't, I didn't know why he needed to do it or what, what you know, and... His head Three went. Russia blood. It was a crazy the challenge. Place yeah, 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 there was, there was things, and 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 leads me to my point, Rob. And and, and as a neutral sitting on my sofa with my cup of tea, watching you, you Bex and, and and Tim doing your stuff and and watching the game, and do you know what, mate? <laughs> there's there's nothing quite like this league, honestly. Mm. You know, in a game that didn't have loads of goal scoring opportunities, mm. wasn't. Brilliant football no, for both wasn't. teams. Two teams mm. who will be probably top six, possibly top four challenging. Um, what a brilliant watch, mate. Intense, competitive, physical, abrasive, commitment. Uh, both mm. teams trying to play, trying to get each other. Two coaches, young coaches, at it at the touchline. It, it just encompasses it. And it was really funny because what was happening... and. It's not a slight at all on the Bundesliga, but it was a big game in Germany, wasn't it? It was uh, Bayern mm. versus Dortmund, Dortmund yeah. and Harry Kane's got his hat trick and all that. And I think they were showing, they were, I saw little clips of Harry's goals in the game, and, and I'm looking at, 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 at what's going on at St. James's Park, and I'm going, that's what makes the Premier League the best, Rob. There's that, there's that fight, scrap, you know, against two teams who really want to play, who can play, who want the ball, who can create chances. But on a day when it wasn't about that, it was about rolling your sleeves up, it was about not giving an inch, it was about putting your foot in, it was about winning tackles and duels, and eventually we get the VAR and we get a goal. It's such a great... It, this league is such a fantastic, action-packed league mm. that we're talking about a 1-0 game with a goal that was scrappy and could have gone lots of different ways. Mm. It was one of the games of the season for me. Mm. Yeah, it was, Rob, and... and um... You know, just to follow on that point, you know, my my slight doubt about Arsenal was because we know how Newcastle play. That's no surprise. That atmosphere, mm. that energy, yeah. that physicality. Yeah. I mean, Joe Ellington. I mean, I wouldn't want to play against him in midfield. He, he's a he's a big <laughs> guy. They got they got beast. tons of physicality way, everywhere. Declan Rice is a beast uh, in another way as well. He's a football beast, by the way. Declan Rice. He was incredible. I mean, his he? energy, Rob, is incredible. His energy is incredible. And that's going to be. I think that's going to be his role, Rob. I think it's going to be his role, the Granite Xhaka yeah. slash meant to be Kai Havertz role, the left side of those three in midfield. I think he's going to, mm. I think he's so good. I think, I mean, obviously, they wish they could have two. 
Declan Rice is. They want they want a, a number eight Declan and they want a number six Declan because he can do both. But given that left-sided situation Correct. and how good he is getting forward, yeah. the energy he's got, driving the ball forward, helping defensively, Jorginho, who, who needs that Albert midfield, he was absolutely yeah. perfectly mm. good, good. But I just wanted to go on, Rob, and credit Arsenal because right from that first yeah. thunderous challenge when William Saliba went in on Joe Ellington, <laughs> I mean, they, yeah. I thought yeah. Arsenal physically... They matched Newcastle, Rob, and I didn't know whether they could do that. They were prepared to go, I don't know, in each other's faces to match that physicality. I think yeah. that's what upset Mikel Arteta so much that after all that, they still end up on the losing t the side because his team gave everything. And I, my respect for that team and the way that this club is and the team is evolving, that's an important yeah. part of, of, of being champions. You know, mm -hmm. we all know about City. They got plenty of muscle and pace and power in, 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 in different parts of that side. And I just was impressed with Arsenal's ability to live with some of that and to stomach some of those decisions. Yeah. And, and also in the face of some uh, over the top, I thought, particularly from Bruno. I know, I know that Havertz was, a, was an over the top challenge as well. I just yeah. was impressed. I know they lost the game. I know the Arsenal fans mm -hmm. are still bitter. I still believe that, they, that the referee, it, it really hurt Arsenal. With a Bruno, should have been a red card, and with a foul in the back. For me, my opinion was they got they got really burnt there by the officials. But well done in so many aspects of that performance. Yeah, physical yeah, wise, Rob. Yeah. I thought they 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 kind of grown from last year. Yeah, I've got some of the point. My, you know, my, my note on on Arsenal as a team is I don't think they're quite as fluid as they were last season, Rob. I don't think yeah. we've seen that that green yeah. football yeah. quite yeah. at the level. No, not yet. But there's more fight about them. Yeah. There's less fluid, more fight. Uh, yeah. And you know what? To, to win a title, to hang in there as they may need to do if they get down the stretch again, um, it, 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 it augurs quite well for them. I mm. thought it was a day, Rob, um, if, if I'm being honest, where they lacked a little edge in the top end of the pitch. Mm. And, 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 I, and I hate to do this because... I, know I kind of feel like I d I, we're not giving this guy a chance. But he's the Okie Koki player. Is he in or is he out? It's Eddie and Ketty, my friend. Mm, mm. Uh, the, the wonderful hat trick last weekend. I think we, we might have given him an underappreciated and can he do this? And, can, yeah. and then you see days, Rob, where it just doesn't quite happen for Eddie. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that, Rob. And maybe we, as we finish off this game, Rob, let's, let's just pull out a few individuals, mate. Yeah. And I'm going to start with actually yeah. my underappreciated performer of the weekend, Rob. And uh, and I and I got so much respect for this player um, and what he's done since getting back into the Newcastle United team. It's Jamal Lascelles, the captain yeah. of Newcastle United club. Sven Botman has come in and taken his position in the side. You know, Lascelles mm. is a bit of a Newcastle United legend. has been around there for a long period of time, the club captain. And he's come in and had a long stint in the side and another very strong game from Lascelles. And, you know, we, we know he's not first choice, though he might be now going forward for a little while. Yeah. But, but in terms of, let's not forget how good he is and what a good defender this La, La, Lascelles yeah. is and has been and continues to be given. You know, he wants to stay at this club. He wants to, to keep going. Well, other players might have said, you know what, it's time for me to move on. I'm out the side right now. But I, I like his attitude, his character, and he was good. He was very, very big in this and, yeah. and helping, as you said, Ed Inker, to not have a, yeah. have, a, have a brilliant game. So my underperformer goes to Jamal LaSalle's. It's a great shout. And, and to be honest, mate, I have to say, you got in there before me because if I had a chance, he was going to be mine. And, right. and for two reasons, for all the things that you've said. But my second reason was, Robin, and it's a bit more of a focus on, on what you started with, squad players in professional in Premier League football now, Rob, it must be the most difficult job. When you're Jamal LaSalle's and can play like that, but most weeks you're going to train from Monday to Friday, you've got to sleep right, you've got to keep your diet, yeah. you've got to keep yourself in good shape, and most weekends you're not going to play. And mm. then you probably play a behind-closed game door on Tuesday, you do a bit extra running on a Wednesday, keep your fitness. Yeah. You know, it, it's a really it's, difficult yeah, role. When you're not, it's, it's the best job in the world when you're playing. Yeah. Best job in the world, there is none better. But when you're a squad player, and to be a squad player, but keep his attitude, his influence around the football club, apparently he's a big, he has a big voice around the dressing room and make sure things are done right. And, and Eddie Howe's talked about it. He wants to keep him at the football club. I think it's a brilliant shout. And, mm. and it would have been my underappreciated performer of the week. Mm. Not only the way he's played, but the way he's conducted himself, you know, while he's not 
Nash Lovely been a first team player. Anybody else to pick out, Rob? We talked about Declan Rice, talked about Eddie Nketiah, uh, Jamal Lascelles. A- anybody else? I mean, Anthony Gordon's kind of, you know, um, I know he got the winning goal, but he, Anthony he's... Gordon, yeah, he was he was another one. Yeah. That you know, it, interesting with Anthony Gordon because I watched the game, I watched the uh, League Cup game midweek, Rob, and Anthony Gordon actually started as a centre forward because yeah. Isaac was out. They, you know, they were wanting to save Wilson and we know Wilson's injury issues so they played him as a number nine by the way he did a great job yeah. he looked a better player than good Martial player. as a number he's a, nine he's a good for signing. Newcastle mm. he can play mm. and, and he's, 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 he's important Rob and he, he kind of came on my underappreciated and, and yeah. I thought well maybe not doing two from the same club but mm. you know Bought into the football club, people were like, oh, yeah, a lot of money, money what yeah. to do? You know, Harvey Barnes was coming, he thought, well, maybe, yeah, that'll be good now. He's become important to them, Rob. Mm. Anywhere mm. across that front line, he can mm. play either side, he can play centre and forward, he's getting a few goals, he's getting confidence. Mm. And Eddie Howe's always said that there's more to comfort from mm. uh, Anthony Gordon. So, yeah, it was a good shout, Anthony Gordon, as well, mm. I thought. You know, important goal, however lucky and what VAR did or didn't do, his goal, you know, was the difference between the two teams. All right, Rob. That was uh, yeah. We had a good. Yes, it was such a cool. such a dramatic game of yeah. football, and I agree with you. What a great advert yeah, for the Premier League yeah. in, in many many ways. Some not so much, but most of them it mm. really was. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long, and for even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.